Hello everyone and welcome to my playthrough of Alone in the Dark, the 2024 edition. I have been so excited for this game uh, ever since it was first announced. Uh, I believe it was last year or the year before, I can't remember. Um, this is written, or uh, the narrative actually, was uh, um, headed by the guy who wrote Soma and Amnesia Dark Descent, uh, both of which are games I love. So I'm so excited for this game. I have heard some of the the uh, critical reviews on this game. You know what? Don't care. I want to play it for myself. I want to experience it for myself. So without further ado, let us get started. Uh, challenge. Now let, let's just go standard. Difficulty guidance. Extra help provided to make the experience smoother and easier, including hints and helpful highlights. Or old school. For those who want to figure everything out for themselves, no extra systems to guide the player. You know what? For the first time, let's just go modern. Uh, I know there's a lot of puzzle elements to this game, and while I do love puzzle games, um, I don't want to spend too much time thinking on stuff, because I know I want to get through the story at least. Ah, oh, so excited. Oh. You jump right in its mouth. Dark baby! So, your uncle. What's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him, watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. That's tragic. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis, figuring he might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. Oh, what exactly are we going to do when we find Jeremy? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Let's just find him first. Okay, so... 
right off the bat. Okay, I can see the the graphics and the animations a little bit. That's okay though. I'm, I'm okay with that as long as it's a good story and the gameplay is fun. So just a very very quick um, backstory on all this. For those of you that don't know, Alone in the Dark is considered to be the original Alone in the Dark is considered to be the grandfather of modern survival horror of survival horror in general. Um, and, uh, you are, you basically choose the character you want to play with in the beginning. Uh, well, not at the beginning, throughout the, the main game. And then you can go back and play as like the other character. If I remember correctly, uh, detective Carnby, the guy on the right is a little bit more action focused while, uh, I believe it's Emily Hartwood on the left. She generally has more puzzle-based. Um, she has a more puzzle-based story, puzzle-based campaign. Not to say that, you know, Cardi doesn't have puzzle. Not to say that Hartwood doesn't have action. But it's just more focused one way or the other. Uh, for those of you who played Resident Evil 1, it's kind of the same thing that way. Uh, between uh, Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. So... We are going to be playing both campaigns, but starting off, I think we're going to start off with Edward Carnby. Um, David Harbour. Man, I'm such a huge David Harbour fan. Ever since I first saw him in uh, The Green Hornet. Yes, The Green Hornet with fucking Seth Rogen and all that. And he was a bad, a bad guy. It was like Mayor Scanlon or something like that. I loved him from that movie. And uh, Emily Hartwood is uh, Jodie Comer, yeah. From, uh, oh, what was that show? That, like, spy show. It's not really a spy show. I forgot what it is. With um, Sandra O. Oh. I only watched the first season, but it was actually pretty good. Okay, so, as I said, for the first playthrough, we're going to go with Edward Carnby. abandoned. It can't be. There has to be someone around. Wait here. I'll go around back. Okay. Interesting. Look for a way inside the house. Man, I gotta find a different place for, for my lighting system. It's like hitting me right in the eye. I can barely see in the dark. So let's figure this out. That aims, and I'm guessing right trigger shoots. Up does not do anything. Up on the T pad. Okay. Oh, that's a dodge. That's a sneak. to run. What is this? Is that now, what do we got here? A flashlight. A clue. Someone left a flashlight here. Why? For what purpose? Kitchen garden key. Key item. Okay. Can we view it? Wow. Can't move it around. Oh, there we go. We can see in the dark. We can see while we're alone in the dark. That's good to know. Okay. Wow. It's controls are a little bit 
janky. They're a little bit too loose. Just have to get used to it. Yeah. Turn that key. I found bullets. Are they 9mm bullets? Is that a clue too? Who would leave bullets outside of a stable? We, we gotta get into the mindset of Karn being nah, here. I'm not getting in there. Nah? Alright. Maybe, maybe we need the key. Or, bolt cutters. Maybe we need bolt cutters. But probably a key. Well, isn't this quaint? I will admit, I'm not the biggest fan of... Oh. Hmm. Now, who would drop an item in there? I'm not the biggest fan of the 1930s aesthetic. <laughs> um, even like the the whole uh, southern, the whole southern bayou and the the, the, the coquette ingenues and all that shit, right? I'm not a big fan of that whole thing. However. I do love the music Whoa. of that area. That is That's a one big, big tree to fit inside a conservatory. Yeah. I do love like the jazz music that they have around that time. And actually, Edward's uh, uh, Edward's um, huh? what accent should be very different. I don't know what. What'd you say? What'd you see? Hear shit. Ah, come on. All right. So it's only around the tree that we hear that. Oh no! Wait. I'm hearing it around here too. Before I go down there, I want to finish. I don't think I finished looking up, looking around here. Oh wow, this reminds me of um, House on Haunted Hill, the the Netflix show. The house kind of looks like that. Okay, cannot go in there. Cannot go in there. Something here though. More bullets? Nope. Health. A drink is health. Good to know. Oh, I can't go upstairs. Okay. Alright then. We will go to the housekeeper's quarters. Break into Dorsetto. That's a, that was not a good Don't mind if I do. It's it's so 1930s to have a drink as a as a healing item, especially in a, for a detective. How very noir of you, sir. Ew, there's got of course it's mice. All right, housemate is still here because the purse is still there. <gasps> she kept bullets. Bible. Now that's a clue. Now why would a maid have a family Bible? Right, I'm gonna stop. Every day your silence weighs a little heavier. It's been a difficult year for everyone and many have lost all hope. I read in the papers about people suffering. Pictures of 
dust-covered landscapes without a drop of water. I wish I knew if you were still tending the earth or if you had turned your back against us. I have started to look for help elsewhere. I pray you will tell me if I am going down a path that you find disagreeable. With help from Batiste and Charlotte, I found comfort in the practice of the voodoo. Ah, uh, the voodoo. I have long been skeptical of that Caribbean cult, but it's been of good use to me. It seems all harmless in my book. I say some words dreamt up by the Creoles, and I carry around a small pocket of Grigri. Nothing of this is mentioned in the Bible, of course, but the French quarter priestess tells me it's all connected. She says the Christian God is just one more perspective on the creator of things. That's what I like to think, but the other way around, that the spirits of her faith are just aspects of you, our Heavenly Father. I am so grateful for the words you gave Mr. Hartwood. We will sing your praises at St. John's Eve. The world will be blessed soon again. Only the sacrifices of the Old Testament compare to your demands. Let it be the truth. A mother of earth, wood, and dirt. A mother of a thousand young. Sacred sand, one dollar. Black cat oil, dollar fifty. Devil shoe strings, a quarter. That makes two dollars and seventy-five cents, madame. What was that you were telling the doctor? A goat without horns. What does that mean? Ah, you must have misheard me, madame. I said no such thing. Please. I know I don't look like any of you, but I'm devout. I'm ready to do what it takes. Mm, do not be so eager to sacrifice the few things you have left, madame. Now please, leave my store. A goat without horns. Okay, that was a lot of extra dialogue. That's a really good price on Devil's Shoestrings. 25 cents? Now is it by the foot or by the by the inch or what? You gotta you gotta you gotta be uh you gotta give details on this. You gotta be specific. And uh yeah, the other way around, uh that the spirits of her faith are just aspects of you. I, I, I highly doubt the Christian god would be okay with voodoo or anything like that. Like, even tarot cards are considered blasphemous. Even tea readings are considered blasphemous, technically. <gasps> she kept bullets in the fridge. Can't be good for the bullets. No, no keys. Don't want to grab any of those keys. Alright, let's, let's check out this room first. More bullets. They're just... Are the slaves... Uh, not Sorry, I'm sorry, the slaves. Are the servants... Um, well, the 1930s, they probably were slaves. Uh, are they planning some kind of revolt? Hiding bullets everywhere? Especially in the kitchen? Oh my god. Okay, this is really... Oh my god, there's so many places to go! Is there a map of some kind? De what? Can I... Deceto, the old plantation building, was ready to fall, but kept alive by some starry-eyed carpetbagger called Dr. Gray. Seeing how the staff couldn't even be bothered with answering the door, Detective Comby figured they would just head inside and grab Jeremy. He just needed to open the front door for Emily first, so she could talk to her uncle. I don't even have a map yet. I can't even access it. What is that? Lan... Lanyapes? 
fuck is that? Never heard of that before. Okay, front door. I'm, I'm nowhere near a door that I could tell. Well, I mean a front door. Okay, that's probably that's the way up. It's not probably. There's fucking stairs. Meanwhile, she's probably waiting Please outside. Do not like touch the boiler. It is working after all. While the sabotage has caused a leak, only the decorative plate has been completely ruined. Let's wait for Mr. Chance to turn up and he can take a look at the leak. Mr. Waits. Um, Hardwood is like just standing outside like he's fucking dead or something, isn't he? <gasps> More bullets. Wow, they're just being liberal with these bullets, eh? Hmm. What? What the hell? I can't do anything. That doesn't look safe. A broken valve. Yeah. Okay, so I cannot go forward. Good to know. I don't want to figure out where this was. Okay. Um, clearly, this is the way to go, so I'm going to check over here first. Yes, more bullets. Oh, health. They're giving me a lot of bullets and a lot of health. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't like that. Okay, so that's a lanyape. A Great Depression forbidden knowledge. I, I don't get what this is. <laughs> what was that? Are non-essential items that you can find throughout the game. Completing sets will uncover forbidden knowledge and sometimes even more. Ooh, I like forbidden knowledge. Land names carry over from game to game. Some sets can't even be completed without playing both of Carnby's and Emily's campaign. Makes sense. Uh, gives more incentive to play the game. Like, play both their campaigns, I mean. Alright. Sweetness. Oh, I didn't even look in here. Or did I? I don't think I did. Actually, I didn't check this side. It's because there's nothing. Um, did we check? No, we did not go down there. You know, at this point, is this, uh... Oh, jeez, that was loud. Is this considered trespassing? Because uh, not only am I trespassing, I'm also pilfering, stealing. Streetcar ticket. Okay, Crescent City. Look, okay. I need the key. In terms of the game, I get it. Why you're collecting like rat poison and ticket and all that stuff for forbidden knowledge. Why in the real world would he pick this stuff up? Just saying, where is it? he's like, oh, rat poison, that's weird. Oh, a streetcar ticket, why the fuck is it down here? Like, who cares? It's not pertinent to whatever you're doing. You're not even investigating anything, you're just here to help a friend, I guess. Well, whatever Hartwood is to us. A lot of stuttering going on in the game. Wait, what was that icon? Oh, it's barred, I guess. Marvelous, marvelous science. Weekly review and progress in industry, science, invention, and mechanics. I have no idea. Books are obsolete? What the fuck are you looking at? No idea what the guy's even doing. Nothing in there. Great. There's even mice in the bathroom, really? Oh god, that hasn't been used in a while. We cannot see our reflection. Uh, 
Um, for those of you that really care, I have this, I believe, on the medium setting, uh, graphics-wise. And the reason for that is it was stuttering like crazy. Like, my, my OBS was uh, acting up quite a bit. Lottie's diary is a clue. 1930. Sunday, June 22nd. I spent all day looking for Jeremy. I should have cared for the others, but I'm scared that he will do something irreversible. Cassandra is upset that I didn't give her the latest shipment of pain medication that Waits brought from the post office yesterday. I would have given it to her, but the company didn't send a new key this time around, so the box is just sitting there on my desk. They must have figured we had plenty of their gimmicky keys by now. I only remember seeing one lately. Grace was playing with it inside the grand parlor. Unless it turns up by itself, it will have to wait. I have to figure out where Jeremy is. I think Jack knew something. That dog of his found a strange rot permeating the house. She's showing us, he said. Like those blots and streaks of fetid rot was talking to him. Interesting. Oh, and um, I'm also aware that there is a... There is a... Um, oh, what map? Set of floor plans. Okay. So that's where I was. So there's a puzzle. There were puzzle items there? I don't recall seeing those in the kitchen garden. I don't know what that's referring to. It's a puzzle. It's interesting that it'll tell you if it's solvable, um, according to the legend. So explored, completed. Okay. So this is just like the... Um, this is just like uh, Resident Evil 2. Um, where it'll actually... It looks like it'll let you know if you've completed a room or not. By having different colors. Actually more like Resident Evil 3. The remakes I'm talking about. Because I think 2 actually showed where items were in the room. But I if I remember correctly, 3 showed... Only if a room was cleared or not. I can't remember exactly. But I remember one of them did that. Piazza key. I doubt that's going to be for this. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, uh... Updated information about the world, including locked doors and unsolved puzzles. All right. Hmm. I need the key. So that's the puzzle door. So okay, that's pretty much where we came from. Is this the... Oops. So that's the kitchen garden. So there are some puzzles here I, I didn't... Oh, right. There was that one thing down there. And then... What was over there? That. Okay, that's what it's referring to. So that I need a key that I don't know what I need for. Oh. Hello, Burr. You're looking mighty shaggy today. Oh. Thanks. Took you half an hour. What are you doing? Who are you? Whoa, pardon me. Excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. 
It's urgent, and no one was answering the door. We can't hear you knocking anymore. None of us can. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that Hartwood glue, doesn't she? That's right. I'm Emily Hartwood. I just came to make sure my uncle is all right. Well, he is unavailable right now. You will have to come back another day. Unavailable? How? Is he sleeping? We can wait. He's lost. Don't I know you from somewhere? Who's your man again, Miss Hartwood? My name's Edward Carnby. Private investigator. Splendid. Enough! All of you, get back to your rooms. The coffee, keep your eyes on the child. And you two, please leave immediately. Look, we're not here to cause any trouble. Just let us see the old man, satisfy the curiosity of my client here, and we'll be off. Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. The whole staff is looking for him. All what? three of us. He ran off? I don't have time for any of this. Please, come back tomorrow. All right, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. In the corridor, it's the first door on your left. I'll tell Dr. Gray you're here. Excellent, thank you, madam. Ah, oh, long gone are the days where you could do that and not get sued. Wow, there's a lot of artifacting, especially on her legs. All right, here we are. Let's look around, see if we can dig up any clues. Okay. Um, like I was saying earlier, I'm aware that there is a demo of this game. Um, I know that it's very short. It's just about 10 minutes long. Um, and that... Uh, what the hell? Why can I not do this? Do I need the mouse? No, I can't do anything with the mouse. I don't know why there's a mouse on there. Um, I initially thought it was going to be like the beginning of the game or something. Um, like a prologue. Like that would actually be part of the game, but um, I did watch it. it. You literally don't see anything. You, the little girl that we just saw on the stairs, she's delivering a note for her uh, for Hartwood, um, her uncle. That's all it is. He plays a little girl for like 10 minutes. Come Every night the, the dark man stands opaque at the threshold of my room, counting the days until my spirit spills out of my tired shape. Only his pallid mask shelters my remaining sanity, staring directly into the face of that demonic sultan would surely sunder time itself. Would he have looked the same to my father as he struggled for his life. Does his veiled face haunt my niece quite the same way? I wish so that I could rest my soul in that sunburnt convent of Tarawea. Would I find you there, Juan? Or Signora Pierosi, back from the beyond? Every night I hide from him, moving from one misshapen memory to another. Seems conjured out of fantasy and delirium. Places I struggle to even paint. I wish I understood your death, Signora. Is there anything I could do for you but bury you in that bleak necropolis? That triumphant chapel rising above the ledges and the oven vaults shall be your sepulchre where you may rest, and I shall weep. How did you first come to understand such things, Signora? How did you know that the battered boil in the basement would lead me to Lafayette Cemetery? Or how the old upstairs clock, with its astronomical motifs, would take me to that hateful mound outside of Claremont Harbor? Those are my memories, my past. 
Is there perhaps a chance, if ever so small, for me to see Tarawea? Oh, I want that more than anything. Please, let my talisman take me there. Let me sit with Juan under his Bodhi tree. Despite having sold me that talisman, Miss Jackson, the voodoo priestess, revealed none of her secrets to me. That's why I had to travel to Tonka. Instead, she cruelly told Baptiste, my caretaker, that he would be betrayed and killed in the most awful way, that the one he loved would pierce his thigh with a sharp spear, and that he would be devoured by his own mother. What a terrible thing to say. I'll be honest, I'm listening, I'm paying attention. I have no idea what this dude is fucking talking about. It's it's all going over my head. Like, I, I have no idea what this dude is talking about. The people of Deceto were becoming dangerous. They do not understand what they are doing. I must do something to stop them. I tried talking to Dr. Gray, but he confuses my worries. He's caught up in treating me. How can he expect evil to be cured with medicine and conversation? The orderlies, the housekeeper, and the patients are all deranged. They will call upon evil to enter this world. All will be lost. Everything. Unless I can find the clerk, Mr. Waite. He seems to be a clear-thinking man. Maybe Beauregard. These are like the most southern names. Lottie, Beauregard. The dark man offered me a prison, and I accepted. I signed that miscarried contract and entered a dark pack. Everyone is safe, except for me. Okay. So he circled some numbers in the top left. Uh, talisman, I guess. 353. Three. Or is that an 8? Looks like an 8, actually. There are always three numbers. Okay. Painted tile. Oh. Painted wooden tile. The motif suggests that this is part of a larger picture. Okay. Is it part of this? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. Or maybe it is. Hey, you know anything about this? Looks like some sort of talisman. No, I don't. Oh, help me out here, will you? Oh shit, did I miss some dialogue? Oh fuck. <sighs> I would kill the guy, throw some of this stuff out? I'd be crazy too if I had this much junk lying around. Save this one. All right, come on. I want to go see Dr. Gray. Why would you want to save that one? Come on, let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, shit. Miss Hartwood. Whoa, whoa. A lot Emily? Of Going 
going on? Where am I? Let's see at the corner store. Why the corner store of all places? Okay, can I load? Twelve twenty-one. Yeah. Fuck. Well, I just missed out on some stuff. Well, some dialogue from her, anyway. Uh, I don't have a key for that. say in R4? In R1? Can't read that properly. That'd be the Jesus. Ew, bugs. Guess you're hostile. Ah! Oh, jeez. I can't. Hold on. Hold on. What the? F How did I not hit them? Good thing I checked the buttons earlier. How did I not hit him those other times? Like, I hit it. I shot twice. I guess it was too close. It's kind of bullshit. Okay. Guess I see why we got a lot of bullets. But I don't have a melee weapon. That's the other thing. Oh my god. Oh. I can't go that way. It won't even let me. That's a great question. I'm just going to be throwing at enemies or use to distract them. Tap RT to quickly throw the item. Hold RT to aim. Okay. Can I... Uh, can I let go? I don't know what'll happen if I let go. I think I'll throw it. Yeah. Fuck. Should have just tapped it. That was a waste. Oh yeah. Did he just do a gulp sound like whoa, whoa, whoa?
Maybe I should have kept looking around first. I didn't realize this is where I need to go. Oh shit. <gasps> Don't let them get inside, Convair. They're not the good guy. Are you... Is this your store? There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's store. Jeremy did this. How? The pack with the dog, man. Jeremy warned us, but we didn't think much of it. I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh, yeah? How much you paying you? $150. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth tonight. Are you a thinking man, compare? No, not if I can help it. You know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace that guides him. The talisman? That's right. It's some magic charm he got for Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess? You know surprising things, compare. Yeah, the mama lower. Here, take the key. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Maybe if you go there, you can find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. So it's interesting he said that this is Jeremy's story, Batiste Keys. Ah, so that's Batiste. There are three keys on the chain, one that opens up to Miss Jackson's place in the French Quarter, and there are two belonging to Dressetto, one for the clerk's office and one for the library. Okay. Um, preserved reptile. Oh, yeah. Go with horns. Or without horns, rather. Um, I forgot what I was saying. You want to come along? Nah, I'm going to stay here for a while. Anything I can do for... Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Batiste. Just tell my sister Lottie I'm all right if you see it. All right, I'm heading out. Be careful out there. You can actually finish the dialogue options good. Um, yeah, I was saying it's interesting he said that we're in Jeremy's story. Like when we went through the door um, and we somehow lost sight of. Um, um, what's her name? Emily. I can't go that way. I wonder what the trigger was, per se, that had us, uh, I guess, switch over to wherever we are now. Nothing in there. Bollocks. Oh, there's a... There's a Mama Duke. Items can be thrown, yeah. Is that is that an item? Oi. Well, I missed. What? Oh, that's a squelch. What the fuck is it? Looks like a skeleton with larva on it. Ugh.
Fuck off. Oh, I thought that was in. That something was in my way. So I just shot five bullets and picked up two. That was not worth coming here. Unless I need to go this way. Oh my god, I got a weapon. I got a melee weapon. I can't go that way. Why not? Because Jeremy said you can't. Pistol, thanks. Oh. What's for dinner? Ew, what are those intestines? Thought it was a snake at first. Ah! Oh, hi. Oh, RB. Through my weapon. Oh shit. Ah! Oh, I my weapon broke. Okay, so I cannot melee without a weapon. That sucks. We're heading upstairs. Oh, come on. Oh, fuck. Where's the other stuff? So, I don't know what achievement that was. Nothing popped up. This game is buggy, man. The fuck is that? That's a juju? Is that good juju or bad juju? Miss Jackson's seance parlor. Let's see if she's got any information on Jeremy's talisman. Well, there's a talisman right there. It's the talisman, like the one in the painting. Find your own talisman. An old talisman shaped over centuries. The engraving of the numbers looks to be less than a hundred years old. The numbers? Oh, there are numbers on there. Or symbols, at least. Oh, I see the numbers now. Yeah, yeah. But the base could be from antiquity. 
The polished black sunstone in the middle has a glass finish and occasionally gives the impression of hiding a picture within itself. Okay. Yeah, I see the numbers, but there's also symbols. They look, uh, the symbols? They look like an offshoot of Arabic. Or maybe they are. Because I can kind of see some Arabic letters put together. Interesting. I can't I can't move in or move it around. Take a better look. Okay. Use the talisman to get to back to their setup. Um, okay, before I do that. I cannot use the key. It will not let me. Okay, I guess I have to. I think it's meant for the talisman. I think it needs numbers, like yeah. coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. No, I don't remember. It was a three, and then this one was a six. And then this one was an eight. State Board of Private Investigator Examiners grants the following license to Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. License number 196692-LA. Good until May 15th, 1930. Cool. Lasting debt. A Carnby, why am I hearing from Gloria Allen that you got some job at the Looney Bin? You better not be thinking of paying her off before me. I don't want to take you for a ride, so get me my money. I'll be at the Maccabean all night if you score some dough. Obed Morton. So this was June 23rd, 1930 was sent. I don't know what our current date is. And that one we already know. Sabotage, we know. Body's diary. Talisman schematics. Oh, we didn't read this one. It was 358. It was 368. Talisman with black sunstone. An ancient navigational tool found inside a chenier along the Bayou Tonk. The old grave was uncovered by oil riggers and said to have unleashed a vagabond devil that massacred its finders. Three numbers are needed to span a bridge between the scapes of dream and memory, according to Stein. Not where I want to be, but it's a start. Three, five, eight. Okay. So. Three, five, eight. It's showing something. A place? Where is that? I remember the ripped painting, but it was huh. vertical, not horizontal. Detective, I was wondering when you were going to show up. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. I understand you are working for Jeremy Hartwood's niece. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. We came here for her uncle. I just didn't expect... I didn't expect this. You are Dr. Gray, right? That's right. You don't happen to have some identification, Detective. I'm not keen on having strangers prying into my business. Oh, Detective Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. Enjoying the view carré, Detective? Those old French quarters, the voodoo people, the gangsters. I'm sure you live an exciting life. Well, it's not quite like the stories, Doc. Just trying to make a living. Aren't we all making a living? 
Well, welcome to Deceto, Detective. I hope your time here will be useful. Now, what can I do for you? Well, why don't you tell me where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? <laughs> why wouldn't that make for a short visit? I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know. A drink, Detective? Anything brandy. Oh, you do belong in the French quarters, Detective. Armagnac or cognac? You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a connoisseur. Having low standards is not a virtue, Detective. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. What can you tell me about Jeremy? I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Doctor-patient confidentiality. I'm sure you understand. So you're his doctor? Sure. But he is crazy. And he's gone missing. Why? Here. Try this. In the champagne glass? Or a or, uh, martini good. glass, actually. Got a bite. Hmm. It's called a sidecar. The trick is not to be afraid of the tartness of the lemon. Then, for goodness sake, don't overdo the triple sec. There's a lot of artifacting going on. Okay. Jesus. What can you tell me about Jeremy? Ah, well, let me think. He is an anxious man, constantly... Worried about events not presenting themselves according to his model of predestination. He complains about things not being carried out in the right order and that something simply shouldn't be. Is any of this helpful to you? Uh, not really. Uh, I was hoping for some direction where to look next. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you then. You should talk to my orderlies. They have been looking for him for a while. I'm sure they would appreciate your help. Yeah, I ran into Batiste earlier. Come to think of it, he... He might have given me a lead. Oh, excellent. So your investigation is already underway. Guess so. I'm gonna go. But I'm sure we'll meet again. Looking forward to it. Safe returns. Okay, chapter two. So, <laughs> the fact they went for Detective Carnby, how did you? Where did you go? I was just talking to Doctor Gray. You disappeared. No, it's not what you think. Have you? Have you found anything strange going on here? Everyone is being incredibly evasive, and I can't figure out why. No, I mean something you can't explain. Paranormal, even. Detective, I really need you to get yourself together. I can't do this alone. Forget it. I'll figure it out. Do you want to come see Dr. Gray? No. I want to, I want to try something. Else. With this talisman, I think I can follow Jeremy, the place he mentioned in the book. What was the name? Do you remember something Spanish? T Tarawea. Yeah, that's where I need to go. Detective? Are you gonna be alright? Little question. Yeah. Of course. Go talk to Dr. Gray. We'll rendezvous later. So you're not going to mention this that you opened a door? This talisman back from the French Quarter in the blink of an eye. If Jeremy can travel so easily, then he could be hiding anywhere, even Teruea. If he can do it, so can I. I just need to figure out how the talisman works. Yeah, so you're not going to mention you opened a door and transported, you know, dozens, maybe even like a hundred miles into the city, into God knows where fighting some horrific fleshy monsters you don't want to mention something about that maybe not to Dr. Gray because well, you sound crazy but at least to your fucking client uh, okay what is with these bells 
rubber stamp. God. Not the rubber stamp. God help us all. So I'm guessing this is the clerk's room. Oh, excuse me. Broken plates, clues. Paul, you're right about the plates on the boiler and the clock. They have been sabotaged, and I think I know who did it. Ooh. They have something to do with Jeremy's episodes and how he seems to disappear at night. Right now, it's important that you keep an eye out for any of the pieces. I want to find out if I can repair the plates. Let me know if you find any of them. Lottie. Tell Lottie to take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. And look well into the well. You know what I mean. Preparing the boiler. I saw you notice in the boiler room. You should know Mr. Chance won't be coming back. I got no business being in there myself, but you can take a valve from the wine cellar if you want to try to stop the steam pouring out. Be careful. Okay. Staff and patient director. Dr. Elmore Lee Gray is DeSetto's chief doctor. Accounting and all administrative work is handled by me, Paul Waits. Magdalena Thompson, or Mags, is responsible for the household. Jean-Baptiste and Charlotte Tabois are responsible for keeping the guests' medical regiments in check. Finally, Jack Chance is our gardener, who can occasionally be seen in the conservatory, but is, for the most part, busy outside. There are currently six guests at Dossetto. Malcolm McCarthy and Ruth Talant reside on the first floor. Jeremy Hartwood, Elisabetta Perosi, Grace Saunders, and of course, Cassandra Beauregard live on the second floor. Okay, I don't know why it's just occurring to me now, but this place is not a mansion or like a house like I thought it was, but it's... Uh, I don't want to say insane asylum. Um, but it's it's a house for people with uh mental issues. Let's say. I don't know why I'm just coming to this realization now. Six. Shack. Okay. Cassandra Beauregard. Cassandra Beauregard, the beloved author. Very exciting, isn't it? What do you want to put down for a reason for admission? What her agent told us. Cassandra suffers from writer's block and needs to finish her moving picture script before the end of June. Mr. Chardot suggests Cassandra's heavy use of barbiturates is holding her back and risks ruining her career. And how should we summarize her personal history? Let's keep it short. Cassandra Beauregard is a beloved crime author who managed to pull herself out of poverty and into stardom. Five years ago, she tried killing herself by jumping off a balcony. The incident left her a cripple and now relies heavily on her wheelchair. Ooh. And that's, for diagnostic impressions? That's tragic. Cassandra suffers chronic back pain following her suicide attempt. She self-administers morphine to keep herself ambulant, but has become addicted and the desired effect is now lost. The drug abuse clouds her mind, and she is unable to focus on real life. To save herself from this insight, she instead makes up stories to fill out the gaps in her own thought process, resembling the Korsakoff syndrome. Oh, bravo, Doctor. How will you treat her? First of all, she needs to be weaned from her drug addiction, and hopefully it will resolve her compulsive lying. Then look into permanently numbing her pain in her back through surgery. Finally, deal with her suicidal thoughts. Fantastic. With such a short time before June, I really hope she gets better soon. We will do what we can. Grace Saunders, 11 years old. Reason for admission? The mother insists on strict supervision by a proper gentleman to avoid further perversion of Grace's adolescence. 
personal history? Grace's family possesses modest wealth and status. Her childhood seems ordinary, spending most of her time with private teachers and family friends. Grace's father recently passed away, leaving her mother the sole caregiver. And diagnostic impressions? Grace has trouble dealing with her father's death. She is willingly suppressing her feelings on the matter and isn't properly acknowledging the trauma she suffered. Any planned treatment? Grace needs nothing out of the ordinary. She simply needs parental guidance. Eventually, we can work on her feelings toward her father. Thank you, Doctor. I'll finish the paperwork and get her installed. I was wondering why there was a little girl here, if this is, uh, if this is an asylum of some kind. Malcolm McCarthy, 54 years of age. Reason for admission? McCarthy admitted himself to Dossetto, stating simply that he needs some damn rest. <laughs> and personal history. McCarthy claims he used to work as a lawyer in Baton Rouge, but says he can't go into details because of some legal dispute. His background remains largely a mystery, except for the occasional clue that he drops in conversation. Huh. And diagnostic impressions. McCarthy is an anxious man and an alcoholic. He often tells half-truths due to some deep-seated inability to trust other people. And how will you treat that? McCarthy will take some time to open up. Spending time with Jack's dog or the child should be good for him. Their harmless nature will help build his sense of trust. Thank you, Doctor. So this... This is who um, resides in the room number of the key that we just picked up in the desk. Elisabetta Perosi, 33 years old? What should I put down as reason for admission? Well, Perosi broke into Dorsetto and was found wandering the grand parlor. She was confused and suffered partial amnesia. She insisted she belonged here and offered to pay for her stay. Right. What do you make of her story? Perosi claims to have been a member of the Astarte artist colony some 20 years ago. A claim that seems contrafactual due to her young age. She looks to be and even thinks she is 33 years of age. That would make her a child at the time. It seems fair to say that Perosi's story is untrue. Deliberately so or not. Diagnostic impressions? Do you have anything? Perosi's story is peculiar, because she retracted her story about the artist colony. She no longer claims to be the same person as Elisabetta Perosi. However, my staff's research has confirmed there was a Perosi at that time who was in her early thirties. I suppose this case will take some time to investigate. How will you go about it? I wanted to contact the real Perosi, but it seems the whole colony disappeared one night. September 29th, 1915, during a hurricane. I will have to take it slow and figure out what this spell of impersonation could have been. Oh, I'm sure it will all clear up eventually. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Ruth Talon, 29 years of age. Reason for admission? Uh. Ruth's father wishes that his daughter be removed from New Orleans nightlife for the foreseeable future. He fears that her overly free spirit is tarnishing the family's reputation. Sounds simple enough. Personal history? Ruth comes from considerable wealth. Her family owns several hotels and restaurants. Unlike the rest of the family, her sense of adventure has taken her around the world, including France during the Great War as a photojournalist. The last decade, she has provoked many rumors of being a debauched flapper, bordering on nymphomania. And diagnostic impressions? Despite her father's frivolous reasons for her to be admitted, Ruth does seem to provide an interesting case. She is refreshingly open and doesn't shy away from talking about her life during the war or her continuous celebration after returning to the States. She is admittedly a sexual deviant and feels no remorse. And her treatment plan? Simply staying at Dorsetto should do wonders for Ruth. If not, at least for her family's reputation. 
Ruth doesn't need to change, but with therapy I might be able to share with her some sympathy towards her family. I doubt she will settle down and become as dull as the rest of them, but at least she might try to be more discreet in the future. So, it's fascinating that we have a melting pot of all these different types of people. Uh, six uh, residents, let's call them, of the Derseto, uh Manor, Derseto Mansion. Um, and they're able to just freely go around doing whatever they wanted. Like, when we first entered the the house and that uh, the housekeeper stopped, I'm guessing it was the housekeeper, Mags, you know, half the people came down and were like, uh, you know, oh, what's going on, basically, right? And she's like, go back to your rooms. At first, I was a little confused, like, why is the housekeeper housekeeper telling, you know, the, the people that she works for what to do? That was, that threw me off at first. But um, it makes a lot more sense now that she's the housekeeper and she's trying to keep the uh, the residents under check. Um, so we saw this girl, Ruth Talon, and we saw Malcolm McCarthy. I'm guessing that was Malcolm and Grace Saunders. Interesting. Interesting that we don't have a patient file for Jeremy Hartwood. Looks like all the patients are accounted for, except for Jeremy. There you go. There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. I need the key. I thought that was a key for a second. The glasses? What is that? Hunting game rifles, I guess. Remington UMC. Oh man, God knows how long all this shit's been sitting out here. And there's a purse just left there. And a purse just left there. Very trusting people to just leave their stuff lying around. Oh, hello. Okay. So there's a puzzle back there, which I'm guessing is the safe. So now the library can be unlocked. So let's head there. I just want to see if we can open this door. Hmm. I need the key. Okay. I imagine we may not be able to access all the rooms either. Those Some are probably exclusive to Emily. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Can I drop down? Oh, we could probably put that ladder up afterwards. Let's get down there. of a library lost plantations of louisiana lost plantations of louisiana terry briglow 1917. Deseto was a small plantation on the eastern shore of lake pontchartrain the land was considered difficult for industry and was sold for only 30 dollars to elia pickford in 1818. 
Pickford employed hundreds of workers from nearby New Orleans to clear the woods and build a small plantation mansion facing the lake with a striking Greek Revival temple facade. Tessato kept a modest production of Paris tobacco and indigo that persisted up till the Civil War. During the antebellum era, Tessato was the source of many rumors concerning voodoo and witchcraft. People who traveled the lake reported seeing people dance at night in front of bonfires, bleating and wailing. On June 17, 1862, Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army recounts leading a raiding party from ships anchored in Lake Pontchartrain in order to seize control of Desetto and free the slaves working there. The captain was surprised to find the workers fighting back with unprecedented zeal. Norton's account describes these men and women as enraged with fanaticism. Pickford reportedly tried to placate the raiders, but was shot in the confusion. Captain Norton left the mansion burning and retreated to his ships with his men. Their seto was left in ruins for several decades. The ownership of the land was long disputed and returned to the Ledoux family in 1901. Several police reports were filed during the following years as the Ledoux tried to get rid of a camp of squatters on their land. The police made several visits to remove the trespassers, but the people kept returning. On November 1, 1907, Inspector Legrasse of the police charged a deadly attack in order to save several children kidnapped by the squatters. Many were killed, and even more were jailed. The following year, Ledoux rebuilt Desato, incorporating the surviving stone foundation and adding a magnificent wrought iron conservatory. The farmland had been reclaimed by the surrounding woods, so it was no longer profitable to use as a plantation. Instead, the house was turned into an artist's colony. The Astarte Artist Colony was a successful group of artists, including figures such as painter Heinrich Cassel and poet Nora Keith. The group was also known for their beloved Mardi Gras crew called the Pirates of Pontchartrain. On September 29, 1915, a tropical hurricane tore through Louisiana, causing Lake Pontchartrain to flood New Orleans. Due to the remote location of their settle, it took almost two weeks for outsiders to learn that the artist's colony was abandoned. The twelve residing artists had all vanished without a trace. The empty mansion of Der Seto still stands on the shore of Lake Pontchartrain, with much of its temple facade intact. The Ledoux family currently has no intention of repairing the house. So it looks like the Astart Artist uh, Artist uh, Colony um, we're using the house and that's where that one, um, that one person, Elisabetta Perillo, uh, is that her name? Oops. Uh, Elisabetta Perosi. She's the one uh, that claimed to be part of that, uh, of that colony of that troop. So did she go through the door and end up in our timeline somehow and was stuck here that that's the only thing I could think of oh baby Ooh. can I can I take it probably not yet I uh, don't want to open any doors, just in case. Trigger something. It's wedged shut. Oh. Okay. So there's nothing else in here. Oh, fuck off. I knew something was going to happen. Oh, is the roof filling up? Oh, shit.
Yeah, thanks. Got it. Move, buddy, move. What happened? Everything's normal again? Right. Can I, can I take the gun now? No. I think the doctor slipped something in that cognac that he gave us. Oh, okay. I, I know, I know where we are. I know where we are. So now we can use... I was right. Bolt cutters. Got it. Water hose. Key item. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? No? Can we can we do the thing with the slider? Yeah, buddy. So do we? Hmm. Why don't we just reach the piece of broken plate? Mummified cat. How did I not see this earlier? Oh, I see. And then we fill it up with water, and then it rises up. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what to do. I get it. And then we just leave the water running. piece of a larger decorative plate. It has a dark and burnt quality. Alrighty. So, kitchen garden is complete. So the boiler room had those two things. Sorry, I'm just I'm just looking at where I'm supposed to go next. A uh, small parlor. Jeremy Hartwood's room. So if I go there and I go there, kitchen pantry. Oh, apparently I didn't pick everything up in this area. Now it's locked, really. Well, I guess Mags must have locked it after I went traversing through the house. So is there anything in here? No. Servitory is all good. Let's um, let's go down here again. I can't. Sounded like music or something for a second. Okay. We technically haven't checked upstairs yet. Um, 
And there's still something in Lottie's room here. This this is Lottie's room? Oh, this is a wash closet. Doi. This is Lottie's room. Uh, we still don't have the key for this. Medicine delivery for Cassandra Beauregard. Right, we can get down this way. So let's see. You know, Mr. Waits, I saw a piece of the plate that Liza broke. I think she's been hiding them. She's not very good at it. She just chucked it into the little room with all the tools behind the boiler. I left it there. I didn't want to embarrass her by picking it up while she was looking. We went upstairs instead and played backgammon. I let her win, because she's so unhappy. The piece looked like the one on display in Cassandra's room. You know about that one already, right? Or is your eyesight really that fuzzy? I hope you don't feel bad about your glasses. You only look stupid when you squint. Maybe if you had more eyes, you would see these things. I wish you had all the eyes you needed. Your best and favorite guest, Grace. Is that some kind of foreshadowing? Dude's gonna have like six eyes or something? This thing looks like some kind of rock. It's another plate for the talisman. Like the other one, it's broken and missing some pieces. Okay, so I cannot come here yet. That was like, he's like, should I? Um, nothing else to do in these areas. So I guess it, it pays to go back to the rooms you were in because there's new documents. I did not see the document there before. I picked up a different one. All right, I guess. All that's left is heading upstairs. Could also head upstairs from the uh, from the other room. It's where the shot. main hallway. Private, no entry. Okay. So this area is a dead end, for now. What's up, Bear? Where does this lead? I'm not going to walk out of this now. I need to help Emily save her uncle. L'oncle? Le what the fuck is all this? Wow. That's all you have to say? All? What the fuck is this shit? Uh, sorry, detective. Didn't mean to obstruct justice or anything. That's fine. You know, I'm kind of busy with my own case of a missing person. I, I was wondering if you've seen Grace, girl about yay high. Can't say that I have. Why are you asking? Well, I'm looking for her. Is she in trouble? No, 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 no. Uh, she's just uh, hiding somewhere. We can't have a rascal like that running around unchecked a time like this, you understand? Well, I haven't seen her. Well, let me know if you find her. I'll be around. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for your man, Jeremy. You scratch my back, detective, and I'll scratch yours. Uh-huh. I love how even the saxophone was like, wah, 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 wah. Oh. 
McCarthy reminded Detective Conby of an old barfly he used to know. He detested him. There was no getting around it. McCarthy was going to have a hard time getting on his good side. Okay, I'm wondering... Well, this room's barred anyway. I'm wondering if I should look at that thing out there because... Okay, you know what? I'll do it on the way back. Because I think I need to go to the other side, too. Looks like everything's back to normal here. So, room six key. What is this? Emily is here. Emily is here! What is that shadow behind her? Emily is here! Emily is here! You guys, did you know? Emily is here. Fuck. Unlocks the shotgun cabinet. Guys, we need to we need to find this thing. Secret objective, dying with dignity. Unlocks a hidden memory in the attic. Weird tales. That kind of looks like the monster, the devil plant. So I wonder if whatever he's imagining imagining is coming to life. Are those clowns that are skating? Edgar Allan Poe, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells. Yep. Yeah, actually, for those of you that don't know, back in the day, um, even around like the 1930s, they didn't have like books with like Edgar Allan Poe or like Jules Verne or anything. Their stories came up in magazines, and they were never as long as they are now. Like, not to say they didn't have books; they obviously had books. But most writers, like most of the stories, were in those magazines. So that's room six. Okay, let's do. Or is this room six? No, this one's barred. <sighs> okay. Huh. How eccentric. Why is no one in their rooms? A starting artist colony. I remember hearing about their disappearance. Must have been 15 years or more now. The simple astrology cipher was a favorite among the artists who lived in the house 20 years ago. They easily turned into numbers when needed but also acted as signatures for the members, as there were only 12 of them. While Detective Combi was grateful to be back at Derceto, he was eager to test his hypothesis. After having suffered through that sinister world, dressed as the French Quarter, Jeremy's writing could be read much more literally. What if Jeremy used his talisman to actually visit those places he mentioned in the book? Conby felt certain that this was the answer. <laughs> 
He wouldn't find Jeremy hiding inside Decetto. He would be in one of those other worlds. And to follow in his steps, Conby would have to investigate the old clock and the boiler and find out what part they played. Okay. So examine here. So... Yeah, there's numbers all around. It's gonna take a quick picture of this. In case I need to reference it later. Perosi's journal. You may need to remember how to get them out again. They are locked up for good reason. I am sure she is still able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people. But not for long. I will see her burn soon enough. That black goat will be sacrificed to put an end to it all. Then it will all be over. No more Derseto, and sadly no Astarte. Those good pirates of Pontchartrain. May you still sail the lake until you find the shores of Hali. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Might as well take a picture of this as well. Okay. Le you know? De Giacomo Mirber. What are these symbols? Looks like alchemy or star constellations. So let's see if the things match up. No, they don't. One, ten, and eleven. I have no idea what these means right what these mean right now. I did it! I crossed the thresholds to my intended destination without a focusing device. My talisman now knows these roads, and I have no need for the plates. I can find my way to Lafayette as easy as I find my own room. I visited the grave of my father and seen the oven waiting for me. Thank you for opening these doors. I now must summon my courage and go back to that hateful mound outside the oil rig. I hope you'll be feeling better when I return. Jeremy. Return? There's something charming about the southern accent, like I will admit. Um, even though I'm not a big fan of, like, as I said, the, the aesthetic. Paintings got some grim looking rot on them. Complete the shade with the rot on a painting. Yeah, I, I figured that. See, so that doesn't make sense either. That makes sense. Does not make sense. That doesn't even make sense. Oh, fuck. No. So that makes sense there. Or Keith. So that doesn't even have rod, so that doesn't make sense.
Maybe. Hmm. Is that it? Okay. So, I guess what we do is we match the names with the numbers on the board and then the numbers with the constellation with the a constellation. The astrology. Uh, where are my pictures? So, William Argus is 2. Franklin Mozig is 9. And Nora Keith is four, so two nine four. So two is the Pisces. Hey, that's me. Nine is Libra, and four is Taurus. There you go. Got it. I'm so smart, guys. I'm so smart. Larger piece of the decorative plate. It has a dark and burnt quality. <sighs> you okay there, buddy? What the fuck? Look at the mirror. Look at what, what's going on there. It looks like he's tiny as fuck. And he's like, or he's so far away. Look at that. It's so weird. It looks like he's standing on the desk. Weird, man. Alright. Huh? Nope, I'll just stay in this room forever. Alright, alright, alright. No, no, no. Music start up again. Oh, what the fuck is that? I thought I saw something crawling. Maybe I did. Oh boy. That nasty, man. That nasty. Alright, bye guys. Detective Conby had a hard time understanding what had happened. It did feel similar to when he was pulled into the French Quarter, but with less power and purpose. Did he cause this, or was it something else? What the hell is going on? Excellent question. All right, let's take a look at this. This must be the clock that Jeremy wrote about in the commonplace book. That is a fascinating design. Huh. Looks like the plate that held the talisman in the seance room. But it's broken and missing some pieces. I think I've seen this somewhere. Okay, before I continue that, let's go in this area. I need the key. Or not. Um, I will very swiftly and promptly head back to this puzzle here. Can I? Oh, I can rotate the puck. That goes here. Um, no. There was something in the commonplace book about this. Uh, 
then that looks right. That looks right. This is not right. Nope, that's not right either. No. at a very precise place. Again, it's very actually, it's hard to act, uh, see the details with like the lights around me. It's just shining right in my eyes. Uh, what is this? Three, six, four? Okay. So now what? Hmm. So three, six, four. That's what it says. Or maybe it's three, four, six. Three, four, six, because the size of the circles, that makes more sense. Bottom was a smaller a circle. Picture in the black glass. It's showing me something. It's the hallway outside Jeremy's room. Yeah, it was just there. You're not gonna turn around and look at me, are you? Better not. Got my eye on you, buddy. Do anything. As his pride faded, Detective Combe was left with a feeling of unease. He had successfully managed to enter a whole new world. How could this be? And why did he accept this so readily? One thing was clear. There were no answers to be found by standing around questioning reality. Knowing only what he read in the commonplace book, Combe headed off to look for Jeremy in the hateful mound. Okay, so that's blocked off now. Oh, what the fuck? The look on his face says it all, like, what? Huh. I made it. I entered another one of Jeremy's memories. Okay. Ugh.
Hello? Anyone here? Anyone friendly? Well, May 1923. Monday. All okay. Ready for delivery. Maintenance. Oil pump must be serviced. Any tampering causes large spills unless properly forestalled. Tuesday. Shipment delayed but delivered. Maintenance. Service bridge close to broken. Wednesday. Prospectors reluctantly agreed to show the burial mound to Mr. Hopwood, a painter, who read about our finds in the papers. He means to return tomorrow and try to find a way inside. Thursday. Mr. Hotwood's efforts delayed. The workers seemed nervous about his presence. Hotwood promised not to return to the compound. Instead, he has taken up an offer by L'Officier, the riverboat captain, who means to pilot him to the site tomorrow morning. Hopefully that's the end. Work can resume. Maintenance. Bridge from the oil tower to the bayou has collapsed. Sabotage suspected. This is the devil that guides us now. Huh. Hmm. I need the key. You need a lot of keys, don't you there, detective? Oh, nothing in there. Well then, that was anticlimactic. Nope. Waste of the room. Okay, so makes you wonder what I can't even even if I had a key, where am I gonna go? Makes you wonder what all this has to do with anything, really. Where is there? Is there a monster? Look at that. That reminds me of. Uh, that movie called There Will Be Blood. Locked. Is there anyone here? Oh, why did I pick it up? Oh, where? Bet I can't like store it or anything or cancel the action. I literally can't cancel the action. I, I have to throw the item. It's a Molotov. I don't want to do that. Oh, search. What have we done? Well, that was a waste. There's a lot of lockers. <gasps> Bullets. Medicines. Go, go. Nothing there but smut. A jetty key. Hmm. Key for the jetty. Hmm. Some nicely folded clothes. More bullets. I unlocked it, guys. Look at that. I'm gonna do that. I'm so smart. There's something missing. Is it a key? No, it's not a key. Something else missing. Uh, I don't know what else I can do. What, what is that? What, what was that there? I see that circle that was there. What do you want me to do with it, though? 
Can't do anything. Well, it's such a shame that some monster with the key item I need doesn't pop out of somewhere and kill me. As you know, that would really help someone out. Not that I'd be able to kill any monster. So I'm just a helpless man. Running around, not knowing what the fuck's going on. I see you. Some bitch. I see you too. I see you. Right. You don't bother me, I won't bother you. Getting closer, are you? No, you're not. I got a lapipe. Okay, dude, seriously? You can't walk over a fucking ledge. Bridge lever. Key item. <sighs> got it. Gulp, gulp. Alright. You guys better not be inching closer. Because I'll know. <clears throat> what the fuck are you? My mother took half my life. It worked. Watch the bridge breaks. Are you? I okay. I was fucking joking. Can you get up the fucking stairs, please? La cucarachas. Get the fuck away from me, please. Cabron. Nothing in there. I got a pipe for a pipe. Which pipe is the better pipe? Look at all the pipes I'm getting, guys. Yeah! Stopped up on pipes now. Oh. Yeah, just drink your troubles away, buddy. Can, 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 I, can I have a swig of that, too? Please? Forget the hat. All right. So I went up to come down. I got a hatchet. I got a hatchet. Hey, 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 hey. I got an ore. I got an ore. I wonder which one's going to be more useful. Where? Oh, there. Uh, run. Run, please. Please, for to run. Uh, oh, oh, I, I got him. I, I got him, guys. Got him good.
break through the barricade. Let me investigate here first, please. Nothing in there. Lovely. I got a shovel. I got a shovel. I'ma bury all my foes down in the dirt. Here's Johnny. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Good. You know, I will say this: they're very generous with the um, the weapons here and the health. How about how about the bullets? Can I have bullets? Can I also have more than five healing item, please? Don't jump up onto the thing here. Don't jump up. Good. Very good. Um, oh boy. Is that a griffin? Is that Buckbeak? Bad. That's why they're being generous with the weapons. I'll be with you a minute, guys. Give me a minute. <sighs> Alright, fuck nuggets. Come get some. Who wants a taste, huh? Who wants more? I'm guessing that's where I need to go. So that's where I will not go. Hmm. Hmm, what? Pull bullets, really? I'm full of the bullets. There. Where? Me no comprende. have some items in some of these chests please great more bullets I can't use oh. where is the music coming from
Might as well go grab another fucking weapon. Let's go drink some milkshake here. Extra points if you get the reference. What the fuck? Out of the monster? Mm. All right, now I'm covered in mud. Are you guys happy now? Um, and yes, you don't have to point it out. The sneaking failed. Surprisingly quiet up here. Serene, even. Tough cloth. So I'll use that to go down the wire, I'm guessing. Yeah, come yep. on, Carby. Wouldn't you rather fall to your death than go up in flames? Yeah. Smooth. Very smooth. And nothing 
out there. Bullets. Oh great, we're going in the water. We're stuck to come out and surprise you. Isn't that convenient? That's a good question. Well, got rid of that monster for me. Okay, I'm guessing that's a boss fight. Hateful mound Jeremy talked about in his book. Oh boy. that thing out of my face who are you what are you doing here I'm just a detective trying to find something called Tarawea you after Jeremy too why I'm working for his niece she wants to make sure he's all right he might be unharmed but far from all right he's a curse upon Deseto oh, here we go again quiet Hair color change again. It was a bust. The oil rig and the hateful mound led him nowhere closer to finding Jeremy. Conby was sure he had struck gold when he found Jeremy's bag, but it was just a trap set by Lottie, another of DeSetto's orderlies. Things got out of hand real quick, but somehow Conby managed to find his way back to DeSetto, none the wiser. At least it was one item off his list. Now he had to figure out what to do with the boiler. Yeah, it's true. And I still... Pallet knife. Tended for painting, but it's enough to slide through the crack of a door. Reflections on the power of the verb in certain texts? Okay. Reflections on the power of the verb in certain texts by Juan Luis Jorge. Juan Luis Jorge. To act is in itself divine. Even the slightest movement of our hand is evidence of our soul in motion. Yet our free will is so easily overwhelmed by the dullness of everyday life. Our actions become rote and rigid in spite of luxury and comfort. True divinity is found in the choice of leaving the stage where we all perform. People who discover this freedom unexpectedly will be struck by the terror of this revelation and become paralyzed, or worse, turn to suicide. However, if you are able to weather that storm, you will discover that there is a divine path beyond that fear. There is a chance to dismount your destiny and make something new. Something that hasn't been planned for, or predestined. There is difficulty in explaining this type of acting, as it transcends our everyday choices. This isn't some banal decision choosing one career over the other, or even who I should marry. Leaving the stage, no matter how, isn't a matter of course correction. 
It's a rejection of the story that the creator is telling. Okay. I don't really know what this is referencing. Is it, again, trying to say that we are all part of someone's story? The Great Library. Sitting room key. Yeah, so I guess now I can get rid it's of went shot. that. It worked. All right. Barlow lens instructions. The Barlow lens instructions. To double the magnification of your telescope, simply fit this Barlow lens to your instrument. Then operate the fine tuners to adjust the distance between your lenses. This is easily done while looking through your eyepiece. Simply search for a position where your picture is clear and appears flat. When correctly tuned, your telescope should present a clear picture with magnificent magnification. Very astute alliteration. Seller key. Oh my god. We got the shotgun. What's this? Oh, maggot. Alright, before I do that... To me, my shotgun. Your new home. Now we're talking. Oh, baby. Fortunately, we don't have, we only have the two bullets for it. Or, sorry, the two shells. I don't think I have everything I need. Okay. So, where was that other place where we needed the pound? Was it upstairs? I think it was upstairs. Okay, guess I'm not gonna... Oh, fuck me. Ow, ow. And shotgun shells right there. Thank you. They're greatly appreciated. Okay. That was, uh... It's wedged shut. That was something. It worked. I know. It worked the last time, too. Okay, where am I? I'm in a hall. So this is just the shortcut. Oh. Okay. Hello. Detective Conby, how good of you to come. Let me pour you a drink. What happened here? This place looks like it was hit by a bomb. 
Welcome to the madhouse, detective. Thanks. Did the ceiling just collapse? I heard it was something in the attic. Something that was supposed to happen, but didn't. How that could have such consequences is beyond me. The truth is, I don't know why the room looks like this. But I bet your friend Jeremy does. You know where I could find him? Oh, somewhere in his past, I suppose. He keeps going on about that mysterious dark man. I think he is hiding from him. Or maybe he's with him. I can't really keep up. I don't worry much. Take a look around this room. You may think it looks spectacularly devastated, but I just think it's finally found its stride. It fits perfectly with the state of this place and its loonies. The same goes for the nonsense with Jeremy. In my eyes, we finally managed to match the wild ride inside all of us. Well, I'm happy you find the evening so harmonious. I uh, hope you don't mind me setting things right. Jeremy's business, that is. This room looks beyond my capabilities. Good luck, detective. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah. Evening, miss. Ruth seemed like a handful. Her talk about Jeremy and the dark man made it sound like she might know something of importance. But ultimately, it felt like a dead end. Yeah. Why am I not surprised? Can I get some more of that whiskey? Go ahead, detective. I don't think I can stomach any more anyway. Am I bothering you? On the contrary, detective. I enjoy watching professionals at work. Well, I better get going. Bye now, detective. Don't take any wooden nickels. Uh, I miss that saying. Where does this head out to? Stairwell, if it opens. It does open. Oh, that goes up too. Okay, uh, let's finish up this. Okay, that's finished. Uh, let's finish up this floor first. It's okay. You ran for like three steps, dude. You're fine. A beignet. Okay. And where do you go off to? Same hall. Just want to make sure there's nothing here. There's nothing there. Oh, I'm back in this hallway. So, okay, let's open that door then. That is a loud ass clock.
I need the key. No. Okay. Top floor first. Can't do anything about it. And the music changed too after we heard it. I just realized there's a symbol com coming off a flashlight. Like, look at that on the wall. Like, what symbol is that? It's empty. But of course it's empty. A syringe. We got a forbidden knowledge, guys. Wait. Show set bonus text. As the world moved into the new decade, America was spiraling into a maelstrom of debt, drought, and death. It was called the Great Depression and ruined many families. It was a fitting name, for poverty also breeds madness through desperation. Jeremy was of course no such victim, for he already witnessed the darkness within. He knew the shadow that stood on his threshold very well. It wasn't new. It was something that had always been with him. Okay. Not quite the forbidden knowledge I was expecting, but I'll take it. Okay, so that's barred. Is that a gun? Oh, I thought that was a gun. Medicine box key. Okay. I know where that's supposed to go. Thought I saw something in there. Okay, nothing else. No. Oh. There's more of that aggressive rot. Oh yeah. On the commun on the commonplace of on evil. the commonplace of evil. There lies virtue and stark irreverence. Careless thoughts of luminous indifference. But blame not the beast we once were, which science so often wished to refer. Not the wicked full of sin. It is you who stand and grin. All our good intentions aside, whereupon we build our pride. Sunless solitude, follow not this corrupting light, profits of confidence, always crashes out of sight. Hear me, for we all bear this mark. Thus we must remain alone in the dark. I like it. I like it. Just pours his sherry and then just leaves it. I mean, come on, people. Ah. Oh. I am knowing where we are. Dr. Jensen Jenkins lozenges. One of the several medicines prescribed to the author Cassandra Beauregard. 
This particular bottle contains tablets set to relieve sore throats and contain two vital vitamins. Okay. Do we do we not know what these vitamins are? Okay, so I have two other keys. Um don't know where they go. Drawing room. What was in the drawing room? Oh right, the telescope. Uh, so I can open the wine cellar there. And I can open the sitting room upstairs. Oh, the that area there. Okay, let's. Okay, since we're gonna end up downstairs anyway for the boiler room, let's do upstairs first. Can't believe it's still like, like evening light. You know what I mean? Like that's like an evening light, early evening, or early dawn, I guess. But I, I think they came while it was still light. Relax, dude. Relax. You're fine. You're good. And I just noticed there's a painting here. Nice girls. Hello? There's something missing. Yeah, it's a country. I don't know what country that is. Is that France? Looks like France. It's like an old... Uh, I mean, it's an old map, obviously. Probably France. Most likely France. Hello. Jeez. This must be that kid's room. Why does she seem so familiar? I don't know. I put my gun away. Don't you worry, Grace. Go play your game. Bleat and bellow with the others. I won't be jealous. There will be more masquerades. However, I would love it if you would finish my mask for the feast. With love, Ruth. Huh. Amazing. All right, there has to be more to this room than just those two things. Oh. Okay, that makes sense. Just take this child's toy. You never know when it might be valuable. I'm just saying, you'll know, you never know when you might need a child's toy is all. More cucarachas, and there's a water. There's water here. But someone, uh, someone pooed in the tub. I'm not gonna name names, but uh, I think it was uh, what was her name? The chick with the kind of curly hair, the blonde bimbo, the sexual deviant. Hey, kid. How did you not notice her? What you got there? You drawing something? Nothing special. I'm just bored. Do I know you from somewhere? I remember you, Mr. Conby. From where? Don't touch that. Cassandra wouldn't like it. She wouldn't like it at all. Do you know where she is? I'd rather not talk about it. It makes me upset. Besides, she'll be back after the Feast of St. John. You think? Yup. It's all on the page, Mr. Conby. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. 
some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Zombies. Got it. All right. I'm gonna go now, if that's okay. I don't like to stay too long in the same place. Mr. McCoffee might find me. Hey. Is he mean to you? Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Conby. You should know that by now. Wow. That's, uh, that's a kid. That's a kid with some sass there. Why did that girl look so familiar? Detective Conby just couldn't quite remember. His last few years were clouded by a drunken haze. A haze which now had turned almost opaque. Considering their shared past, Grace had every right to feel slighted. But it wasn't in her nature. She was amused. If... If it wasn't for the collection of peculiar statues, the old astronomical clock would draw every eye in the room. To Conby, it wasn't the intricate clockwork that stood out, but the odd-looking plate on the inside. It reminded him of the ritual bench in Miss Jackson's seance room, where he had manipulated the talisman to open a door back to DeSetto. He wanted to try to replicate the procedure, but found that the inner part of the plate was broken. He would have to find the missing pieces and put the plate back together. Yeah, I'm just going through the older notes. All right. Your medicine. Miss Beauregard, I picked up your medicine at the post office today. As you understand, it needs to be administered by the orderlies for your safety. I've put the box in Lottie's room for now, and I'm sure she will find you as soon as possible. Mr. Waits. Margrave Liniment. One of several medicines prescribed to the author Cassandra Beauregard. This particular bottle contains an ointment for pain relief sold as the fourth version of the company's popular recipe. All right. So this is where Cassandra Beauregard ended up. For some reason, I thought she died years ago. So we got another one of those puzzles there. There's more of that rod again. Like it's guiding me to do something. But what? the shape of a snake. There must be something important to find here. Maybe it has something to do with the numbers on the labels. Okay, so what were the numbers? Two, five, something seven? Yeah, I, I can't. So two, five, something, seven. It's another one of those strange padlocks. Maybe just two, five, seven. All right, good thing I took a picture. So Pisces again. Five is two, three, four, five, Gemini. Six, seven, Leo. My brain power, guys, my brain power. It's a piece of a larger decor decorative plate. It has a light and almost wood-like quality. Okay, out I go.
I have expected the room to turn. I'm not gonna lie. Um, sitting room, so yeah, that's still that puzzle. Sorry. Um, still something in Jeremy Hartwood's room. Now we have to go back downstairs to go into the cellar. Which electrical circuit breaker belonging to a fuse box. How convenient. Oh, there it is. It worked. Okay, so I got the valve used for adjusting the flow of water and the steam. I'm gonna regret turning off the lights, aren't I? first, I guess. Jeremy? Oh, shit. Yeah. I thought that was a shadow of a person on the wall. So I cannot do this puzzle now. I gotta talk to Jeremy here. <gasps> what the hell is going on? Ooh. Where's the body? Does that have something to do with the eyes that Grace Come, talked about earlier? I didn't know what to make of the grotesque vision of the dead clerk. Was he dead? Or was it all fiction? The medicine bottles had stains of rot on the labels, suggesting some greater shape. They just needed to be put in the right order. But for what purpose? Okay. 
What do you leave? Another piece of the puzzle. Uh, yeah, light and almost wood quality. Wood like quality. Okay. Um. So the corners are there. Okay. Um, maybe that goes there? No, that goes down there. No, that does not look right. I think that looks right. Um, no. Goes there, I think? Yeah. goes like that. Oh, and then these go down here. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, wait, that was right. There we go. Or not. Okay, the bottom four have to be right. This looks wrong, but that looks wrong there too. And then that maybe goes there. I have no idea. Hmm. Oh, here we go. So, what is it? Nine seven five. Glass is showing an 
another room. Must be a way to another one of Jeremy's memories. So, yes, I remember where that was. That was the cellar. The door just opened on its own. Oh, boy. Getting good at this, Carnby. Maybe a little too good at this. The odious stench of a flooded cemetery caught him off guard. It was one of the many things that clued Detective Carnby in on that this place wasn't the real thing. This was some nightmarish surrogate patched together by Jeremy's tattered memories. This is why we bury above ground, he thought, and set off to find the chapel that Jeremy had mentioned. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm guessing that's the way to go. The Hartwoods family crypt. Emily's family must have deeper roots in New Orleans than I thought. I figured she was a Yankee like me. I mean, we're not going to desecrate a fucking... Coffin, a mausoleum. So this goes on. Okay, so that means I just want to check out this area here. Is that talisman? The blessing, key item. Rustic plate adorned with lost allegory. What's this? Now what do we got here? <sighs> got it. So what was that? Just the shortcut? Ooh, sledgehammer. Yes. Uh, oh, hi. Okay, so where I was going was the, uh, was not the right way, which means I want to go there now. Come on, man. There is no way I missed those two times. Come on. Um, 
Can I seriously not pick that up? Fuck. It was the chapel Jeremy had mentioned in his book. With a bit of luck, soon Combi would be able to catch up with the old man. He just needed to find a way inside the chapel. I mean, most likely with the medallion I have, but I'm going to take a quick look around. Oh, lovely. Okay, nothing else. Wait, did I just pass it? Jeremy sketched this chapel in his book, so it must be important. Looks like I'll need more medallions to open it, though. I don't think I have everything I need. So, I don't... I don't get it. Where do I go? Do I go back? Missed an area. Can I take the medallion too? Oh shit, I didn't, how did I not realize this area?
Jesus. Move faster, man. I don't need to sneak. I'm already sneaky. Yay, a melee weapon! Yay! That is saved. Praise the Lord! Of course, I'd praise him more if I could find the fucking medallion. Ugh. grodiest thing I can ever imagine. Where the fuck am I going, man? Oh, this looks like an arena if I've ever seen one. Ooh, that was two drinks. Nice. Hello? Deathly silent, nice. The Amen. How interesting. That no way is gonna bite me in the ass later. Ooh. 
Ah, that cognac tastes so good. What? Oh, hi. Ah! Oh, jeez, there's a lot of them. Uh, can I, can I go? Ah! Why didn't it grab it? Why are you not grabbing that? Whatever. Oh shit. burst into flames, but I will take it. Why are we not grabbing that? It's blocked. Crucifix as a weapon. I gotta see this. Back, foul demon. Back! Wow, it's still got a lot left in it. Another crucifix. Uh, I'll take the other crucifix. Sure. And then not get out this way. Okay then. Oh, through here. Nope. That's where I came from, right? Yes, that is where I came from. All through here. That makes sense. So that's where I broke out of. Fuck am I, dude? Of course I'm full of pistols. Am I blocked? 
walked in. No, they're just not following me. The sacrifice. Now what do we got here? Huh? Alright, can we get into this chapel already? So that's, uh, that's a writer. That's Beauregard. Well, I guess we found out what happened to her. Alright, Jeremy, you better be fucking in here. I swear to God. I don't... Are they all supposed to connect? Is that is that what I'm supposed to gather from this? There's some kind of picture to show. So uh, it showed that picture that uh, that I needed earlier on the boilerplate. but not of the one where I am. All right, I got to decipher it myself.
That can't be right. Oh my god, you can move the medallions around. It took a lot longer than it needed to. Please don't touch her. Jeremy, what are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you. I know, it, it's all a big mess. No one understands. I, I'm just trying to keep evil at bay. Just for a little while longer. You've got to come back with me. Your niece is waiting at Dorsetto. Emily? Why would you... My letter. Oh, keep making it worse. What is going on, Jeremy? How is any of this happening? I made, I made a terrible promise with someone. The Dark Man. Who is he? No, 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 don't say his name. He can hear us. He's always listening. Jeremy, I need to understand what is going on. I promised him everything. When the sun rises, I will be chained in his sunken desert temple for an eternity. But at least the evil about to awaken and to settle won't harm anyone outside of that cursed place. You're acting crazy, Jeremy. I want to help. There's nothing you can do. And what's all the business about Teruea? Why did you want to go there? Oh, I can't go there. I'm not allowed. But you wanted to. Can I go? Tell me, will it help me to break your pact? Is there something there that would help? Why would you give me hope? That's so cruel. Okay. Sounds like we're onto something here. What should I- Look out! Behind you! Run! Don't let him take you! Oh, jeez. Is she really dead? 
My everything. I've seen so many strange occurrences lately. Memories explode into existence and then bind out like tide glass bulb filaments. Dreamscapes crash down from the stars and sink into the sea. Doors that lead to nowhere and absolutely everywhere at once. With all this reverie, I want to think there's a chance that you found a way to remain alive in some way I cannot fathom. Just like I've learned to navigate with my talisman, maybe you, with all your knowledge, you somehow knew a way. A way to find me again, perhaps in Terroya. Oh, my love, Jeremy. Luggage key item. Perusi's body looked unharmed. Conby couldn't figure out how she died, or why this wasn't a bigger upset to the people at the Seto. Or why I couldn't see her earlier? Jeremy didn't want to be saved. He felt the need to honor some deal he made with an entity called the Dark Man. Conby wanted to think it was ridiculous, but a brief encounter with that unbearable gloom had shaken him to his core. Conby had seen a lot of bad things in his life, but he had never before been this terrified. After gathering his thoughts, Conby figured he would need to chase after Jeremy in the only place left he could think of. He needed to go to Tarawea. Fuck. She's dead. No matter how she died, she looks peaceful now. That she does. Oh, great. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, no. I wanted this. Okay, so Perosi's room is empty now. Thought that was a monster for a second. Barlow lens for the telescope. A lens that can be fixed to amateur telescopes to increase magnification. A telescope lens? Why would he lock that up? Okay, so where was this Jeremy again? had found a way to enter Tarawea, but he wasn't allowed to go. He knew deep down that it was impossible for him to cross that threshold. Instead, he hoped that Perosi would go in his place and burn his library to the ground so he could start again. But she never got the chance. Perosi had her own problems, her own demons, and she died suddenly one day without warning. Holding the telescope lens in his hands, Detective Conby suspected what it was. At least a part of the key to that paradise Jeremy so desperately wanted to see. Curious what he would find, he felt eager to put the lens to use. Yeah. So where was it? Was it right across the hall? No. Drawing room, so I need to go downstairs. Okay. Funny how we never keep, how we never run into anyone else here, you know what I mean? Like just, even the housekeeper, just cleaning this area at the very least, you know? I heard that music playing. Okay. 
Okay, bar low lights. Okay, this is supposed to be scary. Just zoom and focus. How do I do that? Oh! Sitting there? Oh my god. Here too. These are statues? Uh, okay. Don't tell me these can rotate. Okay, good. I'm guessing that's there. No. There we go. going on? It's dialing in something all on its own and it's showing the way to another memory? Where is that? Another world seeping into Deceto. Was this a taste of that mysterious Terawea? Where did that show? Can I check and see where that showed? What's my objective? I will get in the dining room. Oh, okay. Wait, how do I get to the dining room? Well, I need to go up the stairs and down that way. She is gone. So what was left over here? Why is this still... Showing like something can be picked up here. Is this it? That's it. Brightness from afar. Okay. Yeah, we do. Chapter three. All right. Mm -hmm. 
I'm glad to see you made it. I had my doubts, but the hope you instilled has yet abandoned me. I guess this must be Tarawea. Who are you? My name is Juan Luis Jorge, and this is indeed the convent of Tarawea. You'll have to excuse me, but Yermi never got your name. The name's Edward Carnby. I'm a private investigator. You're not a patient, are you? No. I'm the author of a book that Yermi once found important. How does that work? Are you part of this memory as well? Is this even a memory? I think calling me a manifestation of Yermi's subconscious would be more correct. And so is the convent of Tarawea. I'm a man Yermi has never met. And we are in a place that he has never been. Okay. So are you here to guide me or something? I have no more purpose than you do. I simply am. I will happily help you, of course, if I'm able. If you are already somehow part of Jeremy, why did he want to come here? Isn't he sort of here already? Jeremy wanted to come here because it's a representation of his mind at peace. When Dr. Gray asks him to find his focus during his sessions, this far-flung convent is what Jeremy imagines. He is under the impression that if he could physically come here, he would reach a perfect equanimity. A spiritual apotheosis. You don't think it would work? Jeremy subconsciously knows it's just wishful thinking. He can't come here. Despite the pathways opened by the dark man between their seto and Jeremy's psyche, it's simply not possible. But I'm here. <laughs> Indeed. It's a shame it's just another place for you, detective. Otherwise, you could have become a Buddha. Always a bridesmaid, never a blushing bride. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. You'll have to chase enlightenment elsewhere. So what's the next best thing? What can I do here? You should seek out the convent library and try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. It's the sort of knowledge he represses and is unable to reflect on. Will it tell me how to break the pact? Perhaps. At least you'll have something to confront Yermi with. Wait, why can't you just tell me? I don't know such things. You'd be better off consulting the text of Dr. Freud if you want such answers. <laughs> no thanks, I hate shrinks. There is another thing you should know about the library. He is here as well. The dark man has been working his way through the text for a long, long time. He's here? How am I supposed to get past him? Be careful, detective. Oh, jeez. Just perfect. Okay. Combe felt confused by the pleasant nature of Terawea. It was somehow uncomfortable to him. Juan, the sweater-wearing Buddha, wasn't helping either. According to Conby, people just weren't meant to be this nice and genuine. Best to hurry off to the library, he thought, and see if he could find information about Jeremy's relationship with the dog man. All right, I've been waiting to... Oh, it's starting in the middle. I was waiting to get to chapter three in order to end the episode. Um, so far, my thoughts on the game, not quite what I expected. Um, but I'm intrigued as to what is going on. Um, I'm interested to see what the dark man is doing here. I'm wondering if Jeremy knows something that the dark man wants. And he made a pact with Jeremy to give him what he wanted so he would be able to go through his mind and get the information he needed. I, I don't know. Um, I suspect a sneaking mission. Uh, I'm going to have to sneak through a lot of uh, the areas here. That's that's my guess. Um, but yeah, a lot of questions. You know, what? obviously, what the hell is going on? Uh, why are we going through memories of... Um, you know, Jeremy's psyche. Are they even memories? 
are they places he just wrote up? Because this is a memory of a place he's never been here before. Maybe he wrote it and he just conjured it into life in, and we're able to access his psyche. Who knows where we actually even are? So, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued as to what I was going on. Again, not what I was expecting. Combat sucks. I will flat out say the combat is really bad, but that's fine. That's okay. Um, I like the puzzles. I like where this is going. Um, I thought it'd be a lot scarier than what it is. But again, I'm intrigued to see where we're going. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.